Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Microsoft Power Toys for Windows XP Tablet PC Edition. Something that I briefly touched on in my last Tablet PC focused video on the Experience Pack. And we have covered all of the other versions of Microsoft Power Toys on this channel before. The versions for 95, Windows XP, and Windows 10. Yes, there was a version of Power Toys for Windows XP, but it was not edition specific. This right here is specifically designed for Tablet PC Edition. And what also makes this unique is not only does Microsoft include various power user focused features in here, but also some games and some learning utilities that were actually designed for novice users to get them accustomed to using the stylus, which I find interesting that Microsoft bundled those with power toys because these were traditionally power user focused features that Microsoft did not provide any support for. And just like those other versions, this was completely free to download, though it was not a single setup file or anything. You had to go and download 25 individual setup installation files that Microsoft provided on their website. And that also makes this the largest collection of power toys that Microsoft ever released. Unless, of course, the version for Windows 10 eventually gets more than 25 features. But yeah, let's go ahead and go down the list here. So our tool here is a digital coloring book. That's the best way that I can describe it. So this is not really a power user focused feature, but it's kind of a fun little thing that you can mess around with. And I almost feel like some of these were tools and programs that Microsoft developers were working on, but Microsoft just didn't want to include them in the final release of XP Tablet PC Edition. So they just made them available in this pack because that's just kind of the vibe I'm getting from some of these here. I also should uh, note as well that these were released prior to XP Tablet PC Edition 2005 that we're running right here but they still run just fine on version 2005 anyway. So here is our tool right here, we'll open it up. And this is all there is to it right here. So it's really like a paint program that has a little bit of a funky looking interface here with this window that's got all these funky angles going on. And you can just select whatever color you want. Uh, you can get access to the color palette by tapping the rainbow thing there. And so we can pick say this blue here, and then I can start drawing, you know, we'll write MJD here. There you go. And yeah, so you might say, okay, what makes this different from Microsoft Paint? Well, the major difference is this little area down here where you can insert an image to trace over. So I can insert this car here and then I can just color this in. And yeah, so that's that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm probably not gonna sit here and color in this entire thing because, well, you get the gist of it. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is. Now you can also import your own images too. So if you want to, like, let me say, go into paint here because you have to, I believe it only supports bitmaps. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can only import bitmap files. So let me just really quickly here, we'll go to uh, accessories and we'll open up paint and we'll just draw, you know, something really, really basic here. So let me maybe make a circle, and maybe another circle on the inside of it. There you go. That's, that's a great, that's going to keep someone busy for a while. So we'll go to save as here. We'll save this to the desktop as just untitled.bmp. That's fine because untitled is of course the best, uh, file name in the world. Uh, we don't have um, file extensions on. You know what, let me turn that on really quickly here because that kind of just bothers me. Show, or yeah, we want to show hidden files as well, but hide extensions, turn that off. And now I can go to open here We can go to our desktop and we can open up uh, untitled. Oh, it could also open up the mjd.bmp that I made in the last video. So there we go. So now we've opened that and then I can trace over this, you know, however I want. So we can maybe color the inner circle green here. And yeah, that's the art tool for tablet PC. Very, very basic, but you know, for a kid or something messing around with this, I mean, that, that could definitely occupy some time. And it also gets you used to tracing things with the stylus, so, and just filling things in. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Next up is calculator, and this is definitely more of a utility. 
um, because that's, well, what a calculator is. What makes this different from the standard Windows calculator is it has handwriting recognition input. So we'll just install it here and I'll show you what that looks like. So what you do is you just uh, write out whatever numbers that you want to enter in. So let's say I wanna do two uh, times two equals four. Let's say I wanna do uh, two times 10 equals 20. That's pretty much what makes this different from the standard Windows XP calculator. The button layout is pretty much the same for these top buttons up here, backspace, C, E, and C. You see they're the same there and all your uh, memory functions over here on the left side. So that's the same. It's just where the numbers are. That's where you've got the handwriting recognition box and all your math functions over here. And next up is the dictionary tool. Now, unfortunately, some of these do not make an icon on the desktop. As you can see, it's missing there, but we can go into the start menu here and it does make this Power Toys for Tablet PC program group. It's really basic in how this works. And this is not like allowing you to write out a series of strokes with your tablet pen and then have that correspond to a specific word. As cool as that would be, that's not what this does. But what it does is it just allows you to write out or rather type out a word here that is not normally in the dictionary. So let's say maybe, um, I don't know, MJDness. So we'll write that out and enter there you go so that's been added if i go now into you know the run box here and let's maybe change this to handwriting recognition and i write out mjdness you can see it'll show up there as a word so there it is whereas if i were to remove this and then go back in here let's go back into run so let's write out m j d n e s s so you see now it doesn't like it doesn't register that as a word so it thinks i wrote mt dress so that's a very very useful uh feature if you're writing out words that aren't traditionally in the English dictionary, like MJD is for example. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Next up is drawing animator. What you do is just draw shapes and various things, and they kind of animate and move around there. I can make a square here. So maybe make like a triangle and just another circle. You can just do all, all, all sorts of stuff write mjd although the j didn't really register oh because it's two strokes that's why what you can also do is go up to options here you can turn on stick which will basically make it when one of these things touches one of the sides one of the edges it will just stop moving so you see this one right here stopped maybe i draw a square down here and it starts to head towards that side maybe maybe not let's just do this there you go so like if i draw a square here and then like connect it to the wall it won't move at all you can faintly see it there it's a really light color that i drew it in but yeah that's it again more of something to like pass the time you could say it's a game but it's not you know really that entertaining for me personally but yeah this one definitely gives me a vibe of like a microsoft developer was working on it just for fun and then microsoft said hey we can put that into this pack if you want because we don't have any other use for it and they said sure now extended desktop we're going to save for last because this is one of the coolest ones in here and it does require me to change the setup around so we'll come back to that and next up is handwriting.exe which the full name of it is the handwriting analysis tool you would think oh it's going to like analyze your you know handwriting to get used to what your handwriting looks like when it's trying to recognize it using the handwriting recognition functionality no this is <laughs> what this does is you write out things and it tries to tell you about your personality based on your handwriting definitely sounds like a really interesting and kind of odd program here so write the following phrase give tablets ice cream often okay so we'll write out give tablets ice cream often and again my handwriting is not really anything to write home about but there you go so you hit analyze could not find 
<laughs> Speaking of, could not find the word give. Okay, so let's uh, get rid of that here. So it, it couldn't, I guess maybe it thinks that's a nine or something. Let's make it a capital G. So give, I'll write this out like really slowly. Give, could not find the word give. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know if that's me, because that's clearly give. Like if I were to write that in run here, like let me go here and write out give like it can clearly recognize that so if I write it out here and we hit analyze could not find the word give so I think that's the program bugging out there so maybe we won't actually get to see uh, what this does I'm just trying give because if it can recognize give then it should say could not find the word tablets but yeah so I don't think we're gonna get very far here you just saw I wrote that in the run box in the handwriting recognition thing and it recognize it just fine so i think this program is just bugged out or something but yeah microsoft releasing something with bugs holy cow man can you believe it no freaking way uh we can go to contents here though and read a little bit about it about what it's supposed to do anyways the object of handwriting analysis tool for tablet pc is to examine the characteristics of the user's handwriting and to report what it reflects about the user's personality you know i have heard of this before i don't think there's any merit to this what is this graphology yeah let me look this up so according to wikipedia graphology is the analysis of handwriting with attempt to determine someone's personality traits no scientific evidence exists to support graphology and is generally considered a pseudoscience yeah that's what i would have thought so yeah this tells you a little bit about it here uh what it claims to do but uh, in actuality, it doesn't appear to have much merit. So, uh, yeah. But you can go through here. So, how to analyze handwriting. It tells you write out the phrase, click analyze. And so, it tries to determine your attitude, mental ability, communication, goals, self image, emotional, and social skills. Yeah, I don't really think you get any of that from somebody's handwriting. Okay, next up is the hold tool. So it's just installed here, and this one here, I'll be completely honest, I don't really know what it's supposed to do. It says here that it turns off press and hold functionality for certain control types. Scroll bars, push buttons, and check boxes, radio buttons, spinner controls, slider controls, and tab controls will respond immediately when the pen tip touches them. Press and hold functionality is preserved on all other surfaces. Start the application by the shortcut do that. So what, what it's saying is when you touch the tablet pen to a scroll bar, for example, it will immediately allow you to interact with it instead of having to press and hold it, I guess. But I, I feel like you can do that just by default. Like if I go here and make this inactive, right? And I go to like this capture here, or we'll open this up and zoom in to get some scroll bars. Okay, right now, with this thing off, I can touch my tablet pen to the scroll bar and move it around. Okay, so right when it makes contact, it moves around. I can interact with it. So what exactly does this do? So you turn it on, you make it active, right? So there it is. And you like it does the same thing i'm thinking like can you just tap it and then it like controls it no if you go to microsoft's website for this it says annoyed by the press and hold functionality of your tablet pen download the hold tool and turn off the press and hold functionality for certain controls scroll bars push buttons check boxes radio buttons spinner controls slider controls and tab controls will respond immediately when the pen tip touches them but that's like what they do anyway here's some sliders and check boxes right so I can touch this and and move it around. You still have to hold your pen on the screen. I mean, I'm thinking, can you touch it and then no? Can you press the button on the side? No, that doesn't do anything. So what does this do? It, it says it like it, it's acting like it makes some like massive difference. I don't really see what it does personally. The only thing I can think of is perhaps the original version of XP Tablet PC functions differently in this respect to where this would actually make a difference because again we are running version 2005 here which came after this set of power toys so yeah that is the hold tool and what it is supposed to do at least and next up is hoop strategy 
Now this is both a game and a bit of a learning utility as well, in that it kind of gets you accustomed to using the stylus, which I, I guess all of these tools do, or at least most of them in some respect. Let's see if it made a shortcut here. Yes, it did. Hooray. It's one of those. Yeah. So what you do is you, you're supposed to draw a path for the basketball to get in the hoop. So that did not follow the path at all. Let's try that again. <laughs> so you do that and will it make it? No, it won't make it. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. That won't make it either. Let's try this. Oh, there you go. This looks like word art here too. I think that is word art. <laughs> that's, that's just hilarious. Okay. So I try to try to make one to see what the other word art things are. Score! Oh my gosh, with the drop shadow and all. So you pretty much just draw lines. I mean, that's that's it. Good job. Nice shot in all caps. Are they all in all caps? Swoosh. I thought that that other one wasn't in caps. Maybe they are. Score. No, well done. That's not in all caps for some reason. Yeah, and you can see actually that that is <laughs> that the ball is like a PNG that doesn't have the background cropped, the yellow background, because when it went over the hoop, like, let me just do this again and show you. Like, you see that there? How it's like... <laughs> oh man, that's pretty funny. Yeah, you can see like the background of it. It's not cropped out. So yeah, that's that's the hoop strategy game. And next up is ink screensaver. So this is a pretty cool one. Also worth mentioning, some of these do require .NET Framework 1.1. So if you're trying to install these and you get a .NET error message, that's why. So let's go ahead and go to our properties here. Go to screensavers. And we should get a new option in here for ink screensaver. And pretty much what you do is you go to settings here and you write out or draw whatever you want. You can even insert a background. So maybe let's insert uh, the wonderful winter.jpg here. So we'll insert that. And then let's say I want to get uh, this pen here. Let's change the size to thick. And I can just draw out you know, MJD, and maybe we want to do some highlighting here and select that and then like make it super large. Okay, there you go. So you hit okay. And then when you hit preview, it will draw out exactly what you wrote with the highlighting and all. Of course, with the screensaver, and I don't know why, like, I guess a lot of people, maybe not a lot of people, people, there were some people making screensavers that did not get this, Microsoft even, because like in the Christmas theme, or not the Christmas theme, the winter packs, 2003, that I touched on on Christmas day of 2021, there was a screensaver that like you were looking out a window, but the window was static, it wasn't moving. The whole point of a screensaver is to prevent screen burning, which like having a solid background here would not do at all. Now, obviously there's a bit of motion here, but all this area up here where there's no motion is not going to help you at all when it comes to screen burning. The only thing you could do to make this like a really effective screensaver is to, let's just clear all this and then clear the background and just get here and just draw like all over the screen to where every area of the screen is getting some motion. There you go. It kind of draws it, I guess at the same speed that I was drawing it. That is the ink screensaver. Next up is, what is next up? Letterus. This is another edutainment thing. It's a game and it also helps you get accustomed to using the stylus. And what you do is you got all these letters falling down and you're supposed to just draw out words that you can make with the letters to make it disappear. So like I can write out wow here, and send word, there you go. We can write C and that's not an E. Okay, clear word. Um, we can make a pen. That's not an, okay. All right, we'll write out, oh, we'll get two here. We'll write out C. No, that's not a P, it's an E. S E. E. I guess you gotta write freaking capitals. Okay, send word. There you go. So you see we got rid of three of them there. You can see how quickly these stack here. So I gotta focus on this. Oh no, I don't want why did no 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 go away. Go away. Go away. 
Okay. Uh, the A apparently went away. Oh, I guess A is a word, so you can just write A. Yeah, that's a word. So let's write out C again. I don't know how all that went away. I don't know what I did. Uh, it's the asterisk. That's what it is. You see it comes down and yeah, so it's like a little helpful thing. I don't know if you can turn that off. I changed it to expert mode here thinking that that would make a difference, but it doesn't. So I think that's just a nice helpful thing to make it so you won't lose as quickly because it is going to be pretty difficult to write out, especially with the handwriting recognition on here. It can sometimes not be the greatest. Next up is Maze Game. So this one is pretty simple. You got to get the green box to the red box by drawing a line and without touching the edge. So you see you have to end your stroke in the red square. So we'll just do a, a new new maze there. And so we'll start here. We'll slowly go around here. Da, da, da. See if we can make it over here. Do, do. And I touched, nope. So you see that we screwed up. I think you can just start again. Yeah, so you don't have to restart the entire maze. But yeah, I have played games like this before, but obviously having a stylus instead of a mouse makes it much easier to do. Congratulations, you won in 28 seconds. Would you like to try another maze? Yeah, sure, we'll do one more. So let's see how quickly we can do this. Oh, uh, well, that sucks. We, nope, okay, one more time and then I'm gonna move on. <laughs> uh, come on. There we go, 19 seconds, not bad. So we'll say no, and yeah, that's Maze Game. Next up is Microsoft Dots. So if you've ever played Foggy Boxes from After Dark Games or something similar, this is essentially the same game here. You're drawing lines, trying to get boxes, and you want to make your moves, you know, there's an element of strategy to this here because you don't want to just start making a box because you alternate here. So like if I were to do here, the computer's gonna automatically take this box by drawing from here to here. So there you go. That was not me, this counted as a stroke. I'll just do it again here to show you. So I do here, 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 and then the computer's going to take that. So you wanna prevent that from happening. Next up on my list is phraseology, which is down here, but we're just gonna go down the list that I have, even though these are sorted a bit differently from this point forward. The best way I can describe this is Wheel of Fortune for Windows XP with the obvious tablet PC element here. So you've got a phrase here. Famous quotation is the category. So I can start writing out letters to guess. So we'll write A, we'll do E, we'll just do the vowels here, I, O, and U. And, you know, it doesn't really give us uh, much of a clue here, at least I can't really figure it out. Of course, we start out with this really large one here to where I don't know how, <laughs> I don't really know what uh, what this is. I'm guessing leap, maybe? Leap? That is... That is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Okay, so let's try to write out the entire phrase here. That is one small step for man, comma, one giant leap for mankind. See if it picks up on all that. Sorry, the phrase you guessed is wrong. That is one small step FS slash man, one giant L-I-A-F-S-L mankind. So that's just my handwriting uh, screwing things up. It wasn't able to recognize all of that. But I mean, some of, I mean, come on, you guys could read that, right? I mean, come on. I'm gonna blame that on the handwriting recognition and not on my handwriting. But yeah, that's, so we got the phrase right. That's what matters. But yeah, I, I can imagine this causing frustration when, um, you know, you're like, when you know what the phrase is and you write it out accurately, but the computer doesn't pick up on what you're actually writing out. Elvis has left the building. There you go. Okay, gosh. Now this, I guarantee you, is not gonna pick up accurately. Elvis has left 
the B U I L D I N G. We'll make sure there's a dot on the I. Correct, it got it. Hey, look at that. Okay, no, we don't want to play again. So hey, at least it worked that time. My font tool is up next, and this one is a neat concept. Basically, it allows you to make your own fonts. What you do is you get presented with the alphabet here, and you're just able to make symbols to be included in a font. <laughs> we can write out like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then when you go to adjust spacing, when you presumably have everything written out, it, yeah, it, it actually makes what you wrote into text to where like you got this quote from the Declaration of Independence up here and you know it starts it starts writing it out in your font so of course you know we're gonna mess this up and just draw all sorts of ridiculous symbols for everything so there you go there's our font so you've got <laughs> A through H as like accurate letters and just a bunch of nonsense for all that and now if we go to adjust spacing you can see <laughs> it will look oh my god uh, we can increase the word spacing a little bit, maybe, and character spacing. Yeah. So, there you go. Let's go to compile font here, and let's call this MJDness. MS Press. That's what we're going with. MS Press. And now it's going to compile the font. MS Press sounds like an actual font name, by the way. So, <laughs> and then you can, like, open up Notepad or Microsoft Word or whatever and select the font and start actually typing using the font it's so like so let's install the font on this computer ms press was successfully installed there it is ms press true type and so there <laughs> okay so let, of course we have to open up let's just go to notepad here and we have to select uh ms press <laughs> we'll make it 14 and so now i can go here and start writing out you know hello world <laughs> and it's just oh my god that is so amazing that is oh yes we definitely want to save changes to that that is uh <laughs> my font tool for xp tablet pc edition next up is tablet pool so this is the computer and he did a great <laughs> wow that's a great break right there holy crap so now I get to, we're gonna go, let's see. Let's go like right here maybe. And then just, you know. There we go. And he's aiming for that stripe right there. And he scratched. I mean, we're not gonna play an entire game of pool here. Next up is Power Paint Tool, which is like Microsoft Paint, but just more powerful. Yeah, we're gonna roll with that. The most notable thing this does is add layers. So you see you got five layers over here, so I can, you know, draw stuff, and then add, or go to layer two here, and draw stuff, and then go maybe to layer uh, three, and draw more stuff. And then I believe if you just turn this down here, yeah, so you see that will change the opacity of layer one, can change the opacity of two let's maybe go to a, a nice green here and just start well let's uh, let's go to layer five here and just start writing out you see we got a bit of a gradient going on here um actually that's just from your pressure that's actually a really neat feature as well so you can change pressure min and pressure max to where if i'm just lightly tapping here on the screen you can see that it's all green but if i start to put a little bit more pressure it changes to red, so that's definitely a nice feature. Next up is the puzzle game. So what you do is you've got your puzzle pieces here. You're supposed to drag them around, connect them, and which sometimes works better than other times. So there you go, there's that, and there you go. There's your puzzle, and you get this congratulations. Oh, and you can also hide the key if you want it to be a little bit more difficult. So let's go to options here, maybe change the difficulty. Now this is really stupid. There's no difficulty slider or like drop down menu. You have to enter in the number that corresponds to the difficulty. I don't know why this was implemented like this. It's very convoluted, but so we can say five to make it the most difficult and we'll hit okay. 
and we'll say yes. And I think there's just one puzzle. I don't know if, oh no, there's there's a few different ones. So we can say jungle waterfall. Yeah, you get the gist of it. That is the puzzle game with its really stupid, I don't understand why, like why? And while we're on the topic of games, let's take a look at tic-tac-toe. I mean, it's tic-tac-toe just with your stylus, so it's not really anything ultra special, but yeah, that's, oh, it didn't register that as an O. So there is an O, I can go there, and then I can go, you know, here, and then he wins because I didn't see that, holy crap. All right, one more time here. There we go. That's how you win a tic-tac-toe. That's all there is to it. That is tic-tac-toe. I mean, what, what more can you say about it? So now we're gonna be getting into some utilities, beginning with thumbnail view. But before we install this, I wanna open up Windows Journal here because what this does is allows you to view thumbnails of your Windows Journal files in Windows Explorer, which you're normally not able to do. So if I start, you know, writing here, we'll say like my notes, you know, hello, world right here with an exclamation point underline that hooray so there we go so we'll save that as mjd and we'll put it in my documents so there you go now if i open up windows explorer and we go into my documents not my pictures my documents and you see you've got the file right here and if we go to view here and we change it to thumbnails you see we just get that generic icon there now if we install thumbnail view that will change now there you go you get a nice little thumbnail there so you can quickly see what is in that note if you forgot what was in it based on the title. So yeah, neat little utility there. Next up is Web Search Power Tool. This one personally seems kind of redundant because it gives you the ability to write out a search query with your stylus and search the web for it. So I can write out, you know, Michael, MJD search and it will open up in this case Bing it thinks I typed out Michael Nib of course what you could also do is just open up your web browser go to a search engine and then do this and write out your search query There you go. I mean, I guess it's nice that it gives you an interface on your desktop, and can you even change the search engine? Yes, you can, okay. So we can make this google.com. So you can use Google if you want, but yeah, it just seems kind of redundant, but I guess, I mean, hey, it, it's a free tool, so, you know, I'll, I'll take it, I guess, but just doesn't seem like it could really be useful. Now there's one more game to take a look at, and that is word search. Let's see here, let's see if we can find some of these. I haven't done a word search, and I can't even tell you how long, but I used to be pretty good at them. There it is right there, power toy. All right. I think that's enough of the word search. I mean, it's, again, I'm gonna say it again, pretty self-explanatory, but let's see what other, like let's do new game here and just see what other, is, is it the same words every time? Maybe select game, game ID, what? You have to enter in a game ID? Oh, load word list, okay. Oh, you can import your own words, okay. So that's neat, you can get hints as well. Board size, so we can make it a larger size. Words per game, here you go, a lot. So does a lot, I mean it's a lot. Okay, well few is three. I would think a lot would be more than, I mean how many, how many words is that, five? I don't consider that a lot. So that's word search, and that's pretty much it for the games. There are a handful of other utilities to take a look at. And one of those is the music composition tool. I don't know the first thing about music composition, so I don't even know how to read sheet music. So, you know, people who are more musically talented, musically inclined, whatever you want to say, will, will, you know, be able to use this program much better than I can. But we can go to, I believe there is a, um, 
Maybe not. I thought there was a demo somewhere. Yeah, right here. Demo. Note that green dots indicate the starting point of gestures. Strokes need to be drawn as crisp lines without extra ink at the beginning or end of the stroke. It tells you to overdraw, or you could just say draw over. It's kind of an odd way to say that. Red gesture lines to make the bottom staff look like the top. Okay. Which you can see. Okay, so you got to draw up like that. And this you start here. Yeah, so those are the little green dots are indicating where you start at. So we can go through here. And once you get the hang of it, you know, it's pretty simple. You can go to new. This is pretty much what I did is I just drew like random, you know, just just random everything, random notes, you know, you can go through and make a really nice piece here. And then of course, you know, say I want to get rid of that. I just scribble over it and it gets rid of it. And oh my gosh, guys, look at this. We're just making music like, whoo, look at this. This is, oh my God, look at it. Look, look at this. This is going to be an amazing song. All right, let's take a listen. Oh my gosh, guys, I think I just peaked in my music career. I mean, it's 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 been a long time coming, but I mean, I'm just so happy. Uh, I, I want to thank everybody for the support. Um, I mean, this is just this has been a really, really amazing, uh, you know, experience for me. I never thought I would get Oh my god, okay, let me <laughs> I have to listen to this now. Let's see how this is going to sound. This is Oh, gosh. Okay, I think we've heard enough of that. So that was the music composition tool. We did the word search game. We've got two writing focused ones. One of them is the practice tool, which is right here. And it's a tool, you're never going to believe this, wait for it, that lets you practice with using the stylus. I mean, gosh, can you believe that? What you do is you first of all write your name. So we'll just write MJD. What you're supposed to do is trace over these letters here as best as you can to get used to writing with the stylus. So there you go, you can say done. And it will then take, this is kind of a neat thing, I guess, it will take the strokes that you make and like morph them into, I assume in this case, an angel to give you some like visual confirmation of what you just drew. Uh, so I guess that's an angel that doesn't really look very much like <laughs> I mean, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll say done or we'll, we'll clear that. And you know, you can pick different words here. You got apple, bottle, you can scroll down, you got vase, umbrella. You can also uh, touch on these letters to filter out the words that begin with. So Z, you know, you could just literally draw the letter Z. I wonder what this will do. So you say done. It's just gonna, uh, oh, it makes the letters. Yeah, I was, I was guessing it was gonna make the letter Z, but I was like, what, what is it? doing there with the two parts yeah so there you go and next up the second to last power toy is the writing recognition game what you do is you say a new game and you have to it's kind of like well i didn't want to drop the stylus there it's kind of boring to be honest with you all you're doing is you just write letters in here that are on screen and then it removes them so you know m f N, it didn't register that, N, N, okay, L, can we do F, okay, yep, I don't think we're going to be able to win this one, but that's pretty much it, that's what you do. So funny story, it turns out that I forgot to talk about one of these power toys, that being Microsoft Physics Illustrator for Tablet PC. So we're going to briefly touch on this before we move on to the extended desktops power toy. This is pretty neat, I have to say. What you can do is draw all sorts of shapes and things, and you can make them interact with each other. That's where the physics name comes in. So I can draw maybe a square here. And although that's not really much of a square and then let's say I want to like make this one kind of bump into that one there. So I draw an arrow and then I just hit play here and it will slowly move <laughs> the circle here and bump it into the square. And then the square will bump and, you know, you can set up like a chain reaction. They will go off the screen. 
uh, eventually you can see the circle there is, is going off the screen. But yeah, so you can have like all sorts of fun with this. I think it's kind of neat. So we can maybe just get rid of these here. So let's draw maybe a circle here, a square here, although that's not going <laughs> to... Yeah, you can, you have a lot of control as to what shows up. I mean, you don't have to just do shapes. I mean, I can draw maybe just like a random, like this thing here, and it will create that. Uh, let's maybe write out like the letter M, although that will, okay, so I think it's pretty much whenever you draw something that doesn't connect, like you have to make something that will eventually connect to itself here and that will draw a shape. So if I maybe do like all of this sort of nonsense and then bring it back to here, that will <laughs> that will create whatever you want to call this. And last but not least, let's draw like a half circle kind of monstrosity of a thing there. Okay, so now let's start animating this. I'm gonna maybe have this one go into here and then we'll move this one into here or actually we can just have one and just kind of see how well let's just leave it those two there and hit play and just see what happens because then this one's going to move so let's just see what what madness that we get into here so this one's going to touch that one although it looked like it clipped there a little bit but yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, I, I guess you could say it, it would get pretty repetitive after a while, but I think it's a neat little like sandbox tool that you can just mess around in here with shapes and just drawing whatever you want and then just make lines and have stuff collide with each other. And yeah, I think it's pretty neat. And last but not least, this is where we get into the coolest thing in this entire pack, at least in my opinion, and that is the extended desktops tool. All right, so we've got an external display plugged into the VGA port on the tablet, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the power toy here. And what this does is it brings up this grid interface here that doesn't look like much at first, but as I hover over it, you see we get this box that is showing what we have on the external monitor because we've got the same background. And if you look on the external monitor, you can see that cursor moving around there. So that's what this lets you do. You get full touchscreen access to your external display. It's pretty much the next best thing to this being an actual touchscreen monitor. So yeah, what I can do is let's say I wanna open up, let's say Internet Explorer here, if it will respond to my touch input there. And let me try to drag this over to the external display. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to get it completely on the external display because, you know, it's going to, I mean, I guess I can just really like push this over here as much as I can, but there's going to be a point where you can't really, um, you know, I guess I could try to like shrink this here. So there you go. That's as far off of this display as you're going to get. But with the extended desktop tool here, I can now just go up here and I can grab the window. I can bring it down here. And there you go. I believe you can, and we go to configure here. So you can maintain the aspect ratio. You can uh, enable magnifier if you want. We can maybe turn that off if you don't want uh, you know, it to do that magnification. We can also enable desktop image, which is honestly the way I would prefer to do this. That way you're actually getting an exact view of the desktop. Although I wonder if this is just the desktop background or if it's also like if I open up like my documents here. Um, no, it is. It is like a mirror of the external display. So it's going to probably be a little bit delayed. Yeah, you can see there's a noticeable delay there. But for what it is, I think it is extremely useful. And I'm glad that Microsoft released it, even if, you know, it was in this Power Toys pack that... A lot of people, I'd say probably most people would not really know about because you had to specifically go to Microsoft's website and search for this. You know, I mean, I'm sure they probably had some link or something up on their page, but these, like I said, these power toys were not really official. Like, I mean, they were, they were developed by Microsoft. They were released by Microsoft, but they were not supported by them. So they weren't really like Microsoft products in that regard because you're not going to get any support whatsoever unlike Windows or Microsoft Office that you would pay for. That's pretty much all there is to it, guys. That is Microsoft Power Toys for Windows XP Tablet PC Edition in all of its glory. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.